On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, we talk with Janet McMaster from Geiger, and she gives us the three tips that all sales rock stars have in common. Hey there, and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossaman, and it is my honor. I'm super excited to be joined by a good friend of mine, Janet McMaster, who's regional VP from Geiger. Janet, thank you so much for taking the time. You're welcome, Kirby. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. So I want to jump in on some questions here. So as a, a sales VP, a sales manager, as it were, you're kind of championed, I'm sure, with helping other people grow their sales. I've heard that described uh, before as like pushing a rope, right? Uh, so what are some of the best ways to help <laughs> other people grow their sales? Um, I, I think that first and foremost, you have to truly believe in the industry and the value we bring. If, you, if you're if you out there just selling product and pushing product, mm -hmm. you're going to have tepid success, to say the best. Right. Um, I think secondly, you need to identify what it is that you bring a value to the table. Where's your strength? Is it... Um, is it on handling inventory and fulfillment programs? Is it on the way you marry business with giving back to the community? What's your passion? And I think if you align your sales strategy with what your passion is, whether it's industry, um, the, the friendships you have in the community or externally, wherever those referrals lead, I think that will bring you success without having to work really, really hard at it. Um, and I think most Importantly, we have to all understand that we have moved from a transactional to a relational business environment. And in order to succeed, you have to understand that not every client is going to be a good fit for you, nor are you a good fit for that client. And letting go of some business relationships that you have is scary because, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose some income. But in the long term, that will come back to you by you putting the focus and emphasis where your strengths really are. Um, and make yourself um, invaluable to those clients. Uh, be their champion internally. Let them know that you're there for their success. Make them the hero to their bosses. That will bring that relationship full circle and um, make them indebted to you so that they're not going to be out there sourcing other places. Yeah, that's, that's great advice, Janet, and one of the things that it occurs to me is that regardless of industry, right, those are yep. pieces of advice that no matter what uh, industry you're selling into, that translates, and so that's really yep. good. Uh, my next question has to do with a, sort of a transition over time, and you alluded to this in your answer um, about how things have changed. So over the past decade, you've been watching people in the sales world. How has it, how has that changed? Wow. So many changes in the last 10 years, especially the last five. Um, the sales tempo has certainly changed. Uh, years, you know, years ago, you had that two to three week, maybe even three to four week production time to get from the start of the project to delivery. Uh, that 24-hour service is now a client expectation. Um, we've gone, you know, thank you very much, Amazon Prime, and that whole fast food, instant gratification mentality. I want it now and I want it my way. Um, another way it's changed is globalization. Um, the world is shrinking. We've been saying that for years, but clients are demanding a transparent supply chain mm -hmm. and we have to be ready to adjust that and trust the suppliers with, that we're working with, um, to be true and honorable while that transparency is taking place. Um, big one for me is understanding product safety what that means to the relationships we bring along with uh, social compliance. And it's not just the Fortune 100 or 500, Kirby, that are asking for that. It's even the smaller, medium-sized hospitals and education systems, colleges and universities that are all concerned about this, especially the social responsibility. It, are my the goods I'm buying from you, are they being made by 11-year-olds in a sweatshop who are working you know, 20 hours a day and... Uh, just in horrible conditions. That's becoming more and more important. Um, 
and yes, and I'm cheating. I'm looking at notes. I'm sorry. No, uh, last is um, the demographic of the buyer and the buying patterns, for sure. That M generation, uh, God bless them. They're buying differently, and we have to recognize that. We may not like it, but we better figure out a way to to work with them. Um, you know, they're buying healthy meals online and being delivered to their house. They're buying um, clothing and having it delivered to their house. And they're buying uh, packages that cater to their pets and having it delivered to their home. It's teaching us that our sales process needs to be more efficient, easy, and fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The customer experience has to be on the forefront of that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And uh, the customer experience, that's something that I think we could spend an entire other episode just dis discussing because I think that that's something that each of us, each business, again, regardless of industry, if we improve our customer experience, I think we improve our bottom line. Um, so one thing I know is, you know, I've got, I got a chance to, to, to meet you and a bunch of people at your company recently. And I know that you work with a bunch of rock stars, right? And I'm sure there's, yeah. there's, there's a bunch of people who, um, you know, they do it differently. Um, they go to market a little bit differently, but what are some things they have in common? What are some things that they do similarly? First and foremost certainly is having a plan and having goals. Uh, some are much more detailed at it and regimented about it. Others have goals, but everybody has something written down, mm. whether it's detailed plan or uh, not so detailed. And that plan has to be fluid, and you have to be um, analyzing it from time to time. And what has changed in the marketplace or within the industry I'm selling to that makes me need to adapt the, my plan so that I'm staying on the right course. Mm. Um, fearlessness and confidence, for sure. Not being afraid to go after those Fortune 100, Fortune 50 clients. Somebody selling them promotional stuff. Uh, why not you? Why not us? Do you have the right infrastructure to go after them? If so, go and believe in yourself. Um, that the confidence in what we do, in the client relationship, um, that's something that they all have. Mm. And uh, tenacity and endurance, or in your words, hustle, um, that, that I'm not going to stop, even though I might be tired or, or um, I'm running out of creative juices or those kind of things. Okay, if you need to go take a break, take a walk, get some fresh air, but come back and reattack. Don't ever stop. Boy, I could listen to that answer over and over again. That's really good. Goals, perseverance, uh, and hustle. I like it a lot. All right, Janet, you've answered my questions. Speaking of being willing to step out of your comfort zone, you've done that today, and I appreciate that. Um, so I give everybody a chance to ask me one question. Do you have one for me? I do. Uh, considering the fact that you derive the majority of your income from selling promotional products, mm -hmm. um, how did you decide to dedicate so much time to content marketing mm -hmm. and the energy that goes into all that? Well, that's a really good question. Um, so I think that, you know, a couple years ago, I started to see that the leaders in other industries were focusing by giving first. They were providing content. They were providing value up front. And though, I mean, and I think you know this about me, Janet. I'm a sales guy. I go out and knock on doors, right? But I decided that if I wanted to evolve into the marketplace today and tomorrow, that the best way for me to do that was to, to be a content marketer, to provide value and give first. And, you know, the, the evolution of that question, and I get it all the time, is what, how do you have time? And I, I actually answered it last week to somebody. I'm like, if I've decided that that's really the way I want to go to market, if I really think that's the way we sell, how can I not? Right. That's a little bit right. like saying, you know, I don't have time to make cold calls. I don't have time to follow up. I don't have time to give quotes. Well, that's crazy. And so um, I make time because I think it's important. And uh, I think it's the way of not only the future, but of now. And so that's why I think that content marketing is super important. So does that make sense? Makes very much sense. Thank you. All right, cool. Janet, thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate you doing it, and uh, we'll have to do it again, okay? Thanks for having me. See you in Vegas.
<laughs> Absolutely. Well, that wraps up another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching, but wait, can you do me a favor? Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done it already, the way to do it's right over here. And hey, if you want to watch the last episode, check that out over here. Again, before you leave, subscribe. Oh, 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 oh,